Hello my soccer universe! Thanks to a truly royal mess, we didn't have a Premier League video for a whole while, almost a month. And I think the last time we talked about it, we just uh, uh, saw Arsenal losing to United. I'm wearing Arsenal, they're still top, top of the table, I think we can pencil them in for a top 4 finish. Uh, of course we know why there hasn't been, because there has been a full round cancelled uh, because of the Queen's uh, passing. And that decision in itself is a catastrophe on many levels. A, the reason that it was taken was probably to avoid some undue uh, criticism of the Queen. Um, because, you know, football fans will speak out. It's just so gutless in a, in a way because other sports were playing. And then... Uh, with the whole scheduling fiasco, I mean, the, due to the Queen's funeral, we had quite a few fixtures also postponed and just before the international break. And I said, you know, having only uh, two thirds or of around doesn't warrant a video. So that's why we have to go all the way back to before the international uh, break. The two teams where I thought at least they might do well to have such a break is of course Chelsea and Liverpool. Chelsea having just fired Tuchel with Graham Potter coming in who only had a game against Salzburg at home. So uh, to work with his players and of course Liverpool, uh, they were already complaining that they need a little bit more uh, rest time. Well, they got it. However, let's be frank. Both teams didn't look uh, all that convincing over the past weekend. Uh, beside Arsenal, I think the other big one that we need to talk about is of course Erling Haaland, who is just a <laughs> third Premier League hat trick in eight games for in, in the Premier League. He already scored three hat tricks, uh, evaporating the record set uh, previously by uh, Michael, who took 48 games, and then it's rather, ra ra rather, rather tight. Now, it is quite the feat. I also have, have to say, I think City have not really played any serious comp, uh, comp competition. I think uh, Dortmund, for instance, had, had a really good plan against him. And playing with this City team, I think, inflates the goals a little bit. I don't want to take much away from Holland. I think he's absolutely exceptional. However, um, it has to be taken into account, in my opinion, the, the team that he's playing for. Um, on the flip side of them, that Manchester Derby that, was the, uh, that we had last weekend, where uh, City looked absolutely brilliant, but I think United largely allowed them by just, you know, not playing Casemiro, I think was not a good decision overall. Uh, and we also had a coaching debut uh, with uh, the Zerbi at Brighton, which actually he has a pretty tough program to start off with. He's already got a pretty um, credible point uh, at Anfield. And we also had the first co uh, fire firing with Bruno Lars from Wolves going out. And my favorite stat is that Wolves has as many goals as uh, Holland has hat-tricks. I would say we go into it. Um, here are the results from just before the break, and you see a few postponements. It's all the juicy fixtures in in, in a way. The one that I wanna pick out. I mean, uh, Forest is having a truly bad start to to the season. Seem already like the prime candidate to get re relegated. They had a one lead through a one but Fulham after the break. Within a few few minutes, completely turned the game on on on, on its head without even Mitrovic scoring. Uh, made it three one by the 60th, and uh, O'Brien then just pulls one back. Um, I think the game that I kind of then looked forward to was Manchester City against Wolves. However, that game was so quickly done. I mean, it was an early kickoff, um, and you know, usually I like to take my lunch nap, and it was really I turned the game on. And Grealish scores it 1-0 within the first, first minute. And Holland makes it 2-0 in the 16th. And then as soon as Collins got sent off uh, with, with, with a red card, that was the game. And I took a nice nap. Foden adds another one. City just way, way, way too good for Wolves in that one. There was a clear difference in class. Uh, Newcastle only won one against Bournemouth. Um, they seem to be. I, I always thought that, that, that Newcastle will perform better, but at, at the moment they seem to be a little bit in a slump. Uh, Spurs had uh, quite a handful with Leicester, who in the first half were quite in the, in the game, taking the lead through Telemans. However, Harry Kane, Eric Dyer then turned, turned the game around. But just, just before the half, Madison 
pulls uh, pulls level again and I thought this might be the first real showing by Leicester because they have been a team really really in trouble themselves however the second half it was all Spurs first Bentancur came on and then uh, Bentancur made it 3-2 right after heaven then Son comes on in the 59th for Richarlison he was benched because he didn't perform well boy did he really respond with, three, with a hat trick uh, the first two absolutely brilliant goals uh, from Wide Wide Ranger last one. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, luck there, but I was actually so happy. I think I always said my favorite Prem Premier League players um, Kevin De Bruyne and Hyun Min Song, and I have to say I think I like Son Pro probably mean well even more than the De Bruyne. Simply, uh, simply because the De Bruyne has the benefit of also playing in a great team that do dominates everything. So I don't want him. To perform necessarily that well um, as I would like, for instance, a uh, uh, son. 6 2, uh, emphatic score, and at that point, everyone was saying that Brendan Rogers is in real, 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 real trouble. Uh, trouble definitely not for Arsenal at Brentford. Remember at the beginning of last season, and if you saw all or nothing, we had it again. Um, I wonder whether Ateta put out again his uh, the tweet that was given. Uh, but they were way too good for Brentford. Saliba, Jesus and Vieira uh, by the 49th. It was a 3-0 uh, pounding of Brentford. Um, and yeah, Arsenal rebounding well from uh, the loss to United. And as I said, I think they look like a really, really well-oiled team at this moment. They might go into a blip, but I think they're good. They're definitely good enough for a top four finish and a return to the Champions League. Uh, we also had Everton getting a 1-0 win over West Ham United in not uh, such, uh, such a great game, but Everton actually having had a really cool spell. Uh, on the past weekend, Arsenal against Spurs. Again, I think it was a fully deserved Arsenal win. They were just better. Uh, the first half, though... I think with a little bit of luck, Spurs could have um, scored the first goal as well. Uh, I mean, it was 1-1. And, and the go-ahead had, had, had to go through part. Of, that was a shot that doesn't go in. I mean, this uh, brilliant goal. But, you know, uh, a highly low on the expected goals uh, scale. And, you know, like the penalty that Kane then, then converts, it looked really good, like, uh, what Spurs were, were doing. I mean, waiting for the counter-attack. It fell all apart in in, in the second half, and uh, first it's a mistake by Hugo Lloris, and as good as he has been for Spurs and for France, I think it is time to move on from him. I really got to say, yes, he, he is the captain, but I think he is becoming more of a calamity, and he needs to uh, take care of, of the ball before Jesus can pull people in. Then Emerson Royal is sent off, Maybe it was a dark yellow card, but I can see why he was sent off. Um, and then the one thing that I, I really didn't understand that Conte didn't react right there and then. Uh, and he let the game play on and then Shaka makes it 3-1. And at that point, everyone knew that the game is done. Yes, it's a North London derby, but still, it didn't seem likely. You're a man down, your two goal goals goes down, you cannot really go any, any, anywhere. So uh, questions have to be asked for Conte on that one. I think the best thing for Spurs is to turn the page and go uh, get working. Because I think also the Spurs at the moment, they could finish top four. I think it is right right there. We, there is a chance that, that we have quite a few London teams in the Champions League uh, next season. Uh, because, for instance, Chelsea didn't look all that good in this. Day, but there was another uh, situation where I think the game turned a little bit and said... Edouard gave Crystal Palace an early lead and then I think the scene that uh, really decides that game is when Thiago Silva handles the ball uh, when a Palace player would have gone uh, right through on goal. Now, is it a red card or not? I think when you see it in play, you really think, yeah, if he doesn't do that, then the player runs through. It's at least a yellow. I think his luck was that he was too close to the center line. Uh, to not be sent off, but I think uh, this, this was a really, really tough call and tough also because Silva then assists Obama Young uh, as well to make it 1 1 and then to add uh, <laughs> insult to injury. Conor Gallagher gets a 90th minute winner after Pulisic uh, assisted. Also, in this situation, it was, what a brilliant goal it was. Uh, he, of course, having played for Crystal Palace. So, 
Graham Potter's uh, stint at Chelsea getting off with a hard-fought win. Uh, I think it's the best way to describe it. Um, Newcastle bounced back 4-1 uh, against Fulham. However, an 8-minute red, red card very, very much says it on early. The stunner was more or less Liverpool 3-3 against Brighton. And it should have been, uh, Brighton could have had a 4 0 lead at the half. Uh, Trossard really, really take, take, take apart, scoring two early goals in the fourth and the 70th minute. Then again, Brighton like missing many chances. The Zerbi, uh, you know, making not too many chances. They, they still look, look, look like the Brighton that we had, had before. And I think it will only slightly form, uh, in a way. The one thing that, what the defending of Liverpool at the moment is really, really bad, but I think it's really, really bad because they they don't manage to get the high press or going anymore. That I think is Liverpool's biggest problem. They seemingly don't have the intensity that they need, and then Liverpool looks suddenly pedestrian and is more lower looking like a mid-table team than or you know high mid-table team than a really brilliant one. However, uh, to their credit. Firmino pulls him back after Salah assist and then he scores the second one after Luis, Luis Diaz assist. And they even take take lead in the 63rd uh, through Webster own goal from the shoulder in. Uh, but then if you cannot hold on to such a lead, that's I think is, is the biggest um, uh, thing that they have to look at. Because Trossard gets an 83rd minute equalizer which was fully deserved. However, if you're Liverpool and you have just come down from 2-0 down and take a 3-2 lead, you gotta hold on to that and i think um we have to get used to the idea like two seasons ago the corona season uh that liverpool probably will have a harder time this time time around they will not challenge for for the title i think that much is certain the question is how far will will they fall will they just squeak into the champions league spots or not gotta see uh it's def it's definitely in interesting um on the, other, on, the, on the flip side, uh, City Rouse Everton get another win, the second win in, in, in a row. Maybe they can move off the bottom of the table and go a little bit more towards midfield, which is something that we didn't necessarily expect. West Ham also get finally uh, going uh, um, slowly again, I think. Uh, falling a little bit the uh, Leicester pattern. Uh, they had two good, 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 good seasons. Now it's probably a little bit uh, hard to keep up with that. Skamaka scoring a brilliant first goal. Uh, and then Jerry Jerry the second one. Um, and after the game, Bruno Lage, as I said, was sacked uh, for Wolves. And we gotta have to see who will come. come I mean, I hear Lopetegui getting sacked by Sevilla could go straight to Wolves as well. However, the, probably the you know the standout result. I mean, we had two. We had the North London derby. We had the uh, the three three of Liverpool against Brighton, but the six three of City against United is the standout result. And the first half, when I say that four nil was flattering, I think that's uh, that's how bad United were, and I still don't understand why they wanted to play with City. I mean, United had quite some momentum going in the story. Maybe the international break didn't do, do, do them well. But uh, the fact that you have a Casemiro who can work for two people in defensive midfield, that you leave him on the bench against a City team that is free-flowing and, and, and attacking, uh, just beggars belief to me. They take an, uh, City take an early lead through Foden, then actually miss quite, quite great chances. But then within a few minutes, Haaland scores too. Both assisted by De Bruyne, even one with the, with the head, which is his weak spot. And Holland then assists Foden uh, to make it a 4-0 scoreline. It was every bit of 4-0. And, um, well, the first instinct is how good have City been? If you look a little, a little bit closer, I mean, there is no fight in the United players in, in a way. They're, they're, they're just accompanying uh, the, City, the City players. There's no going against it. Uh, I do think, though, that ahead of... Um, was it ahead of, ahead of the 2-2? Two, two, I think Varane got injured. And exactly in this period where he didn't look good, Haaland scores two goals. So, so that was a, a small factor in, in, in there. But I think City completely overran the midfield. And of course, many United fans are leaving. Uh, to the credit for uh, United, Anthony pulls one back 
in the FIFA 56. Yes, and Holland and Foden complete their respective hat tricks, but they scored two more through Martial uh, and leave Chris Cristiano on the bench. Which, yeah, I you don't need to put on Cri uh, Cri Cristiano. He's anyway having not such a good stint at the moment. Although I have this kind of a feeling that exactly at the World Cup he will be back into some shape or form. Leeds United Villa was kind of a dreary nil-nil draw and then yesterday evening Leicester finally get their win and very emphatically Forrest really looked to be in trouble. It was a game that was actually quite even up until uh, Le Leicester with two quick goals made it made, made, made 2 nil. I mean Avonia even hit the, uh, the post but then uh, Madison the third, third fifth make makes it 3 nil. 4-0 then laid on to Patson uh, It was then only going one way. But this was a, a win that Leicester sorely needed uh, to get out from uh, the bottom a little a bit. So, with all of these results that, that we've been talking about, here are the current standings. Arsenal still up top, a point ahead of City. Uh, who are of course still the overwhelming favorite Spurs and Brighton complete the top four. I really want to see how Brighton, how long they will hold up in India. Maybe, maybe they the new West Ham uh, slash Leicester. Uh, Chelsea United round out and then you see in the middle there's Liverpool. Uh, but uh, again, there are few teams that have uh, games in hand. So it's better to look on the other side where we have it adjusted. And we see that Liverpool just round out the top seven. In this case, uh, we see Arsenal definitely the best team. Leicester still the disappointment of the season. However, they're getting a little bit better. Fulham also outperforming their own expectations. Uh, it doesn't look good at the moment. Definitely for Wolves. Forest, I think Southampton could fall uh, into the bottom. I would expect. And I don't know yet about Crystal Palace. I think they had a rough start. But I think they also had a rough schedule to start the season with. So if you're just for that, and here we see the current expectancy, it's still City and Liverpool uh, on top, but I think Liverpool are falling away. It's very much City's to win. Arsenal Spurs are now uh, the top four with Chelsea and United uh, just behind, and Brighton is at the moment the seventh place. So as I said, they might. We have the top six, and then we have Brighton, who seem to be the best of oh, oh, the rest, although I wouldn't discount Newcastle so far. Again, we don't have many games played, it's just a, around the 20% mark of, of the season, so a fifth of the season loads can change. Everton have been making a huge step up, but if we look at the bottom, it's Southampton, Bournemouth and Nottingham, uh, or Forest, I, I better show, show, show say, that look to be uh, in, in trouble, whereas Crystal, Crystal Palace, yeah, not local and great, but still very, very, very much towards the center of the table. And now uh, upcoming games I give you for the next two weeks or, or already and both big games involve Liverpool. We have Arsenal against Liverpool. Uh, that will tell us a whole lot about Arsenal as well. But I think this is one where Liverpool definitely need to get something from. Um, I also think that Everton United could be a really interesting game uh, go, um, uh, coming on. Uh, of the other fig 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 I mean Brighton Spurs is another one that kind of sticks out that could be an interesting one too and then the week after I may do a video before that I don't know but we have of course on the bottom uh, Liverpool against City I cannot quite believe that we have so that we have four games at the three o'clock slot on Sunday uh, but that's what, what I saw but I think uh, those times will change uh, I have the feeling. So that's a big one. Then we have United against Newcastle, we have Leeds against Arsenal. So I mean, you know, Spurs against Everton. So, you know, kind of some uh, good name fixtures in there. There will definitely be store storylines from uh, what is at the moment the best league in the world. In any case, please add a line below if you want to add something that I didn't mention or if you want to just comment. On the current state, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!